this is lecture 25 and we're beginning on your lecture outline with extra embryonic membrane formation and placentation the formation of the placenta you'll recall learning about these so-called extra embryonic membranes in lab exercise 52 and you might jot down now off to the left on your lecture outline we're going to take a quick look at figure 23.10 and this is on page 878 And so do take just a minute now and just for review, go ahead and locate those four extra embryonic membranes. So again, figure 23.10. And let's take a look first of all at the chorion. And recall then off to the right of the figure, part of the chorion develops into these chorionic villi. But again, the chorion for now, one of the four extra embryonic membranes. Deep to that then, find the amnion. Surrounding, remember, the amniotic cavity. But the amnion, a second extra embryonic membrane. Let's also take a quick look on the figure and find the yolk sac. So a third extra embryonic membrane. And then finally, the fourth extra embryonic membrane, you'll recall, is the allantois, also shown in figure 23.10. And so back to your lecture outline, and now specifically looking at the chorion. And let's run through this quickly. This is, for the most part, information again that you're already familiar with. So the chorion then, the extra embryonic membrane that develops, you'll recall from last lecture, from a structure called the trophoblast, from the surface of the blastocyst. And you may just want to jot down here on your lecture outline a reminder that figure 23.6 on page 876 gives you a good look at the trophoblast, uh, both in a diagram and then also in a photograph. But for now then, the chorion develops from the trophoblast, forms, and again, this is review for you guys by now, forms the outermost covering around the fetus, contributes to formation of the placenta, we have then, continuing, these chorionic villi within spaces called lacunae, and the spaces, you'll recall then, are filled with maternal blood, with blood from the mother's bloodstream. And also, as you'll recall, at the same time, uh, we talked about these capillary networks that form in the chorionic villi. Notice, finally then, in this paragraph, we're talking about a thin membrane called a placental membrane separating the embryonic blood from the maternal blood. And again, keep in mind that the, uh, the embryo's bloodstream and the mother's bloodstream never actually mix with one another. So continuing then with this placental membrane, you might want to jot down, we're now going to look at figure 23.12. And this is on page 880. So let's take a look, top left-hand part of page 880. Take a minute and orient yourself. And you'll see these are structures that you're familiar with. And it's a nice figure because we're seeing now even a bit more detail than we've seen in any other previous figures in your textbook or in your lab manual. Notice then in the lower right-hand part of the figure, 
we're looking at a cross section through a villus. And so take just a minute and find labeled for you, first of all, the wall of the villus. Then find some blood cells. And notice we're seeing maternal blood cells and within the capillaries inside of the villus, we're also seeing some embryonic blood vessels. And so notice then again, these two uh, uh, sources, these, these two sites where we have blood vessels, the maternal blood and the embryonic blood, there's a barrier called the placental membrane. And materials like oxygen, as an example then, can diffuse from the maternal blood across this two-part barrier and into the embryonic capillaries, the embryonic blood vessels, and waste products such as carbon dioxide, for example, can diffuse in the other direction. And notice then the two parts of this placental membrane. We have, first of all, the wall of the villus. And so oxygen, for example, has to diffuse across the wall of the villus on its way to the embryonic blood cells. And then picture after this oxygen has diffused across the wall of the villus, it then also has to diffuse across the wall of a capillary in order to get to those embryonic blood cells. So again, a two-part placental membrane here. Let's go back now to your lecture outline, and we're talking now about the amnion. And so just following along then, the amnion develops deep to the chorion, also surrounds the embryo. The embryo, notice, at this point has changed shape, and that inner cell mass that we've talked about previously has now flattened into a structure called an embryonic disc. And here you might want to make a note that at some point you can go back to the cell to embryo model video. And this embryonic disc then is pointed out to you specifically in the cell to embryo model video. And continuing then with the amnion, continuing with your lecture outline, so amniotic fluid fills this amniotic cavity. The fluid then provides a space where the embryo can grow freely and at a stable temperature. And this fluid also serves as a protective cushion. And then finally, to finish up with the amnion, part of the umbilical cord forms from the amnion. This gets us then to a third extra embryonic membrane that you'll recall, the yolk sac. And here again, we can go back to page 879 and take a look at figure 23.10 at the top of page 879. From your lecture outline then, the yolk sac is attached to the underside of the embryo. So take just a minute now and notice this attachment. And in terms of function then, back to your lecture outline, the yolk sac produces blood cells, produces cells that later become sex cells, forms the digestive tube, and forms part of the umbilical cord. And then finally, we have the fourth extra embryonic membrane, so the allantois. Again, take a look, figure 23.10. Locate the allantois. And notice now, in terms of function, the allantois produces blood cells and forms the umbilical blood vessels.
The next paragraph is all review, and so I won't take the time to go over this again. And then the short paragraph after this is also review, and let's just do this, this one sentence quickly just to keep everyone um, thinking about what type of blood is being carried within these blood vessels in the umbilical cord. And so remember, we have a single umbilical vein transporting, and here you might just jot down oxygenated blood as a reminder. So an umbilical vein transports oxygenated blood from the placenta to the embryo. And then recall also, we have two umbilical arteries carrying blood in the other direction, carrying blood from the embryo to the placenta. And here, as a reminder, you might just jot down that these two umbilical arteries are carrying deoxygenated blood. Down below then, gastrulation and the formation of organs, organogenesis. So gastrulation, uh, the movement of cells of the embryonic dish to form three layers. And this, if you recall from the Life's Greatest Miracle video, was shown in a nice animation this kind of diving down process, going from one layer to a second layer, and then to three layers of cells. And when this happens then, when this has occurred, the embryo is now called a gastrula. These primary germ layers then, back to your handout, among the structures that form from each of these, the ectoderm giving rise to the nervous system and the integumentary system, and by the way, here, you might want to flip back to figure 23.9 on page 878. And now look at the bottom part of figure 23.9. 23.9. And so again, then the ectoderm giving rise to the nervous system and the integumentary system. Among the structures, number two then, forming from the endoderm, the lining of the digestive tract and the lining of the respiratory tract. And number three then, among the structures that the mesoderm gives rise to are muscles and bones. And keep in mind again, we've been talking for a while now about the embryonic stage of development and to finish up the part of this chapter that we're doing, back to your lecture outline, and again, recall then that the embryonic stage is followed by the fetal stage. The fetal stage begins at the end of the eighth week of prenatal development, and the fetal stage lasts until birth. And this then gets us through chapter 23.